Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to introduce you to conditional trigonometric identities. They are conditional because uh, they are not always true. Sometimes they are, sometimes they are not. And the condition basically specifies when they are true. Uh, well, obviously there are some unconditional uh, trigonometric uh, uh, identities. For instance, uh, I don't know, sine of 2 phi equals to 2 sine of phi cosine phi. Or cosine of alpha plus beta is equal to cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta. So, as you see, I do remember some trigonometric identities by heart, although I claim that I don't. Um, so, but these are unconditional. No matter what angles are, these are true. Now, what is a conditional? Well, here is an example. Let's consider that you have three angles, alpha, beta, and gamma, such that they are angles of some triangle. So they are in triangle ABC. I'm not saying anything about what kind of triangle it is. It's just a triangle, and these are three angles of this triangle. Then the following is true. Sine 2 alpha plus sine 2 beta plus sine 2 gamma equals 4 sine alpha sine beta sine gamma. That's what I have to prove. Well, obviously this is a condition, which means that's what's given, and this is something which we have to prove, right? That's a theory. All right, so what can we say if uh, three angles are angles of a triangle? Well, the most obvious thing is that their sum is equal to 180 degrees or pi radians, right? That's the property of the triangle. And obviously, we'll use this particular uh, condition which is given to us, and uh, I will try to use, using this condition, I will try to prove this formula. Now, how can I do it? Well, the simplest and brute force method, well, I shouldn't say simplest. Uh, it's the one which basically doesn't require any logical thinking. You express gamma in terms of alpha plus beta, substitute here, and do some transformation until you will get some kind of unconditional identity. If you do, that's the proof. Well, considering all your transformations are supposed to be obviously um, uh, uh, equivalent. All right, so let's do it. Now, from this, I will say that gamma is equal to pi minus alpha plus beta. Uh, 2 gamma, I have 2 gammas here, it's 2 pi minus 2 alpha plus beta, and I will use this. Now, I will, always, I, I will also use the property of the sine. You remember if you have uh, a unit circle where the sine is an ordinate of a point, which represents an angle, so if pi minus the same angle, you will have the point which has exactly the same ordinate as this one. So sine of uh, pi minus some angle would be the same as uh, sine of the angle itself. So that's why when I will use sine of gamma, instead of sine of pi minus alpha plus beta, I can use sine of alpha plus beta. That's exactly the same thing. Now, as far as the two gamma is concerned here, now, the, when sine is concerned, 2 pi actually is a period of a sine, right? So, uh, I, I can safely just disregard it, whether there is a 2 pi or there is no, 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 no 2, pi, 2 pi. Now, this minus, sine is an odd function, right? So, basically, um, I can bring it outside sine of minus 2 alpha plus beta. I can say this is a minus sine of 2 alpha plus beta. So that's what I will use. All right, let's go to the left part. 
And uh, I will obviously express double angles in terms of single angles. So sine of 2 alpha is 2 sine alpha cosine alpha plus 2 sine beta cosine beta plus sine of 2 gamma is sine of this, which is sine of minus 2. So I can put minus here. So it's minus sine of 2 alpha plus beta, which is 2 sine alpha plus beta cosine uh, alpha plus beta. That's the left part equals. So I'll probably have to open this one up and see what happens. Minus 2 times. All right, opening up this. Sine alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha sine beta. Opening up this. Cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta equals. Now we have to multiply them. 2 sine alpha cosine alpha 2 sine beta cosine beta minus. Uh, this times this, sine alpha cosine alpha and cosine squared. So it's 2 sine alpha cosine alpha cosine squared beta plus or rather minus because the minus is here this times this so it's again minus 2 cosine square alpha sine cosine beta Now we will multiply by this member. Now this minus and this minus, so everything will be with a plus. So it's 2 sine alpha and sine alpha is the sine square alpha, cosine and sine beta. Cosine beta, sine beta. Now this times that, we have sine beta square and plus 2 sine alpha cosine alpha as sine square beta equals. Okay, now let's simplify it. <sighs> this member sine cosine alpha. This member sine cosine alpha. And this member sine cosine alpha. Let's group them together and uh, factor out 2 sine alpha cosine alpha. What do we have left? From this we have 1. From this we have minus cosine square beta. And from this we have plus sine square beta. Right? Now, three other members, this, this, and this, I will um, uh, factor out sine beta cosine beta. So again, plus 2 sine beta uh, cosine beta. From this member, I have 1. Okay? From this member, I have minus cosine square alpha. And from this member, I have plus sine square alpha. Equals. Now, look at this. 1 minus cosine square is a sine square, right? So this is a sine square and another sine square. So I have two sine squares. So 2 again goes with this 2, so I have 4. Sine alpha cosine alpha sine square beta. Very similar. 1 minus cosine square is a sine square. And again, sine square is two sine squares. 2 goes with this 2, and I have 4 sine beta cosine beta sine square alpha equals now what else can I factor out for sine alpha I can kind of factor out 
and sine beta. Sine alpha and sine beta. Sine alpha and sine beta. I have sine I have cosine alpha and sine beta. And from this I have sine alpha sine beta sine beta. I have sine alpha cosine beta. And by the way, obviously you recognize the formula for sine of alpha plus beta. It's sine alpha, sine alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha cosine beta. The sine beta. So it's equal to four sine alpha sine beta and sine alpha plus beta. Now, let's go to the right side of the formula. Now, obviously, gamma is pi minus alpha plus beta. So sine of alpha, we were already talking about this, is equal to sine of alpha plus beta. So on the right side, I have sine alpha, the four sine alpha, sine beta, and sine of alpha plus beta, which is exactly the same as this one. And the proof. OK. And I have another example. I have two examples. Now, as you see, this is not difficult from the logical standpoint, but it is kind of tedious and requires a certain level of accuracy from purely technical standpoint. Well, in, um, in trigonometry problems, trigonometry problems, uh, actually the situation is pretty typical. It's a lot of things related to technicalities rather than uh, like creative flight of your mind, something like this. But anyway, it's all useful things to do anyway. So plus it will remember you to <laughs> it will help you to remember certain formulas. Helps. All right. Condition alpha equals beta plus gamma. That's a condition. That's given. Now, what we have to prove is sine square alpha plus sine square beta plus sine square gamma equals 2, 1 minus cosine alpha, cosine beta, cosine gamma. Well, and uh, the only thing I can suggest is to do exactly the same thing. Use this, substitute to this and this open parenthesis of course and see if you will get the same result so let's start from the left side so alpha is equal to beta plus gamma which means sine of alpha is sine beta cosine gamma plus cosine beta sine gamma square right plus sine square beta plus sine square gamma equals. We have to open this. So it's something plus something square. So it's square of the first one, which is sine square beta cos sine square gamma. Plus double product to um, sine beta cos sine beta sine gamma cosine gamma. That's what it is. Sine cosine, sine cosine. Okay. And square of this guy. Cosine square beta and sine square gamma. Plus these two. Equals. All right, what can we do about this? <clears throat> well, again, we have to group something. Uh, sine square beta 
and sine square beta. Okay. Sine, cosine, gamma. Mm -hmm. Would be sine square. All right, let's group. First, let's group this and this. It would be sine square beta times 1 plus cosine square gamma. That's 1. Then, obviously, we can group this and this. Sine square gamma times 1 plus cosine square beta and plus 2 sine beta cosine beta sine gamma cosine gamma well we might actually stop here and start simplifying that thing if I will not find anything better than that let me just think about it Well, let's just stop here, right, and see what, what happens if I will substitute my alpha here. So, on the right, I will have 2 minus 2 times cosine, which is cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta, times cosine beta times cosine gamma equals... 2 minus this times this. So it's 2. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not alpha beta, it's beta gamma. Don't have any alphas anymore. Beta gamma, beta gamma. So cosine, 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 and cosine. So it's cosine square beta cosine square gamma. This is with a, with a minus sign. And this is with a plus sign, because this minus and this minus, so I will have 2 uh, sine beta, cosine beta, sine gamma, cosine gamma. So, what do we have? This looks like this. So all I have to do is to simplify this into this. Okay, let's think about what can be done about it. Uh, well, probably the best would be to replace cosine square with a sine square here and there because then I will have only sines. So the cosine square is, well, or actually probably sine with a cosine. That would be better. So I will replace this with 1 minus cosine square beta. And this I will replace with 1 minus cosine square gamma. So what do I have? 1 minus cosine square beta and 1 plus cosine square beta. That would be... Uh, gamma, I mean. That would be 1 times 1, that's 1, minus cosine square beta, minus cosine plus, sorry, cosine square gamma, and minus cosine square beta, cosine square gamma. That's what I have from this. Now, from this, I will have, again, to, uh, 1 times 1 minus cosine square gamma plus cosine square beta and minus product cosine square beta cosine square gamma. So now let's compare this and this. This is 2, this is 1 plus 1, that's the same. Cosine square beta here plus and minus nullify each other. Cosine square gamma 
nullify each other. And all I have left is two products, which is exactly like this. Well, that that's basically proves the identity. Um, okay, so these are two examples. As I was saying, they're a little tedious. They do require certain accuracy. Um, well, which is, you know, I, I consider it's a good exercise anyway. So thanks very much for uh, listening to me. And uh, be prepared uh, to go through the whole course of trigonometry filled with certain level of tedious kind of problems. Um, I, I think it has its own purpose, and the purpose is to um, to develop certain level of fluency in manipulating these formulas. So thanks very much again. Good luck.